In this video, we will be solving question paper 5-2 of 9701 chemistry that is A-Levels chemistry of the examination series uh, May-June 2024 and along with solving, we will be also discussing some important tips to be taken care while solving any of the paper 5. So here is question 1. It says calcium carbonate decomposes when heated as shown and this is equation given and the enthalpy change of the reaction delta HR for the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate cannot be measured directly. Instead, a procedure involving two experiments is used and in each experiment the enthalpy change of different reaction is determined here and these are the equations for the experiment 1 where calcium carbonate is reacted with the hydrochloric acid to form the salt and in the next experiment the calcium oxide is reacted with the hydrochloric acid again to form the same salt calcium chloride water again okay so the exp uh, detail of the experiment one is given here that weigh a 0 0.050 mole sample of powdered calcium carbonate and along with that it says a transfer 50 centimeter cube of an excess of 2 moles per dm cube hydrochloric acid into a small glass beaker okay so a small glass beaker is taken in which we have transferred hydrochloric acid now it says start a timer and measure the temperature of hydrochloric acid in a beaker every 30 seconds for two and a half minutes after third minute add the sample of calcium carbonate to the hydrochloric acid in the beaker continue measuring the temperature of the reaction mixture every 30 minutes for the further five minutes and in the experiment to repeat the experiment one using calcium oxide instead of calcium carbonate so the procedure remains the same okay the sub question a starts here it says suggest why the enthalpy change of the reaction for the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate cannot be measured directly now we already know that this is a thermal decomposition means we need to heat continuously during this reaction and if we want to measure the enthalpy change we need to measure the temperature change so the reason is that while heating while heating the reaction mixture while heating the reaction mixture it's difficult to measure the temperature it's difficult to measure the temperature the temperature change i would rather say because for enthalpy change we need to measure the temperature change so while heating is difficult to measure the temperature change okay if let's go ahead with the second sub question it says uh, calculate the mass in grams of calcium carbonate to be weighed using a two decimal place balance in step one now what is step one here step one says weigh a 0 0.05 mole sample of calcium carbonate now if we want to take 0 0.05 moles how to calculate the mass how many uh, grams of mass will take so the simple formula for that is moles into mr that is relative molecular mass of calcium carbonate and the moles is 0 0.050 and the molecular mass of calcium carbonate is 100 but then let's check with the periodic table what is the mass of calcium given at the end of the paper accordingly we can calculate the mass of calcium carbonate so here is the periodic table and the mass of the calcium is given 40.1 for uh, carbon it's exactly 12 we know that and for oxygen also it is exactly 16 so if we calculate it's going to end up not exactly 100 but it's 100.1 so if we calculate it's going to be 5.005 now if they say calculate the mass in grams to be weighed using two decimal place balance so if we summarize it to two decimal place it should be 5.01 gram of calcium carbonate required for if we take 0 0.05 moles of calcium carbonate let's go ahead with the next part where it says 
outline how a student should weigh by difference using a weighing boat in order to determine the exact mass of calcium carbonate added to hydrochloric acid in the beaker draw a results table with appropriate headings ready for the students to complete yes if we start by describing the steps would better say that weigh the bo uh, weigh the weighing boat weigh the weighing boat with 5.01 gram of calcium carbonate then transfer then transfer the cal calcium carbonate to beaker with hcl to beaker with hcl and reway reway the empty boat reway the empty boat actually it's not the empty boat it's the boat with the residual calcium carbonate left in the boat which we could not transfer uh, to the beaker okay so and it says that a uh, draw a results results a table with appropriate heading so let's draw a table here okay here i have already drawn a table now let's uh, write what should be the headings and what should be the contents in the table so heading here i will say mass in grams we need to mention the units also and here we'll say that boat weighing boat plus calcium carbonate and the next we'll write empty boat or boat with after transferring uh, the calcium carbonate so we can also say boat after transferring after transferring calcium carbonate and then we could find the mass of calcium carbonate transferred mass of calcium carbonate transferred this is how we'll write in the table so uh, the heading heading with the unit is a uh, very necessary and this is how it carries a uh, two marks so proper table will give you two marks let's go ahead with the next part which says uh, identify which piece of apparatus should be used to measure the volume of hcl in step 2 and give a reason for your choice now if you find out what is step 2 step 2 is transfer 50 cm cube of excess 2 moles per dm cube hydrochloric acid and it's written 50.00 so it should be exact 50.00 cm cube so if you talk about exact then it should be burette to transfer the 50.00 cm cube of hcl and give a reason for your choice the reason is that burette because burette can measure burette can measure can measure the volume the volume accurately accurately till 0.05 cm cube volume and that's the reason that we can use bure to measure 50.00 cm cube of the any volume liquid volume next part says without making any changes to the apparatus suggest an instruction to be added to step 3 and step 4 to make the experiment more accurate now if we go ahead again with step 3 and step 4 it says start a timer and measure the temperature of hydrochloric acid in a beaker every 30 seconds for 2 and a half minutes and after third minute calcium carbonate is added and again the time is a uh, measured so every uh, half minutes that is 30 seconds the temperature is measured and the question says here that without making any changes to the apparatus so we are not supposed to make any change in the apparatus but still if you want to make the experiment more accurate and take the measurements accurately 
what we can do is that stir the solution continuously stir the solution that's the only method left if we want to make it more accurate without making any changes to the apparatus so this is how we perform the accurate measurements now here it says the student carries out experiment one and obtains the result given in table 1.1 and here is the table where you can see that for the first two and a half minute the SEL's measure temperature measurement is done which is almost constant it's fully constant the reason being is that we allow the temperature to reach a stable for the uh, hydrochloric acid that is if the room temperature or there is a difference in the solution temperature we allowed it to be stable and come to constant temperature measurement at the third minute we are adding calcium carbonate and for the next again next half minute uh, we are measuring the temperature and till the timing is 8 minutes we keep on measuring the temperature and here it says plot a graph on the grid in figure 1.1 to show the relationship between temperature and time use a cross to plot each data point the points and the line of best fit for the data before 3 minutes have been drawn for you and draw a line of best fit for the data after 3 minutes that will enable you to determine the theoretical temperature increase at 3.0 minutes. So what are we supposed to do? We can here look at the grid that temperature is on the y axis, time is on the x axis and for first 2 and a half minute the line and the crosses are drawn because it was exactly 19.0 degrees celsius temperature so it's constant and after third minute that is 3.5 we are supposed to uh, find, uh, draw the points for our temperature change which is given here until 8 minutes and then draw the line of best fit after 3 minutes so that we can find the difference in the temperature at the third minute so let's go ahead and draw the um, graph on the grid given here yes so here is the grid which i minimized according to the size of the screen and i've already plotted the points and drawn a line of best fit for the next 3.5 minutes onwards to the eighth minute and here you can see that i've drawn a line of best fit here uh, which is drawn in the black only few points only few points you can see here are just lying above or below the best fit line so that is only few that is uh, two points above the line and two points below the line the rest of the uh, points are exactly on the line and here we have plotted extended it to the third minute also you can see here i've extended it to the third minute so here is the line and you can see that we need to find out the temperature at the third minute so if we find out the temperature at the third minute this is the temperature and if we find out plot it here then it is 38.5 degrees celsius so if we find out the temperature difference then we need to find out that as 38.5 minus 19 degrees celsius and the difference is so 19.5 degrees celsius that's the temperature difference which we can find at the third minute minute three of the grid now that's the next part it says use your graph to determine the theoretical temperature increase at 3.0 minutes and which we have already found out and it is 19.5 degrees celsius and if we go ahead with the next sub part it says suggest why the temperature measured at 3.5 minutes is lower than the temperature measured at 4 minutes okay so at 3.5 minutes the temperature was approximately some 27.5 degrees celsius or something and at 4 it was higher the reason being is that the reaction is not complete so the reaction is still going on so the temperature will still increase and that's the reason that at 3.5 minutes the temperature is lower and if we go ahead next part student carries out experiment 2 
determines the temperature increase of 62 degrees Celsius and the heat released by the reaction Q is given here. Q is equal to mc delta T where m is the mass of HCl and assume 1 centimeter cube of HCl has 1 gram. The specific heat of the solution is 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin. Calculate key Q in joules for experiment 2 and hence determine delta H2 in kilo joules per mole okay if we substitute all the values then the mass that is the uh, volume of the solution which we had taken is a 50 centimeter cubes now here it says 1 centimeter cube is equal to 1 gram so our mass is also 50 gram into c now c is given 4.18 let's substitute and the temperature change here it's uh, already given yes it's 62 degrees celsius so 62 degrees celsius substituting all the value our answer is 12,958 joules so 12,958 joules that's what the answer and to calculate delta h delta h now is the moles uh, sorry the heat ob uh, obtained heat obtained divided by the number of moles and also uh, its kilojoules we need to convert so we also need to divide by thousand now the moles which we had taken was 0 0.05 that was already given in the question 0 0.050 and if we substitute all these the answer is, is 259 kilojoules per mole now we already know that this this is an uh, neutralization reaction so the value should be negative and so we add the value negative sign to the value that is 2 minus 259 kilojoules per mole this is what we have got now use the energy cycle below your answer to g to add the information given uh, to determine the reaction delta h reaction of the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate enthalpy change for experiment 1 delta h1 is minus 84 kilojoules per mole and this is the cycle given and we are supposed to calculate the enthalpy change here it says to calculate the information uh, use the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate so we are supposed to calculate the enthalpy change of the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate where calcium carbonate decomposes to produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide and so this is the delta h r we are supposed to calculate and the calcium carbonate when reacted with calcium hydrochloric acid that was delta h 1 because that was the experiment 1 experiment 2 was when calcium oxide was reacted with hydrochloric acid now delta h 1 value is given minus 84 and delta h 2 we calculated minus 259 kilojoules per mole here in the earlier question now if we substitute the delta h r can be calculated that's how i teach my student that we always have to do the direct delta and L enthalpy value minus the indirect value now this is the indirect root so if we do direct minus indirect we get the delta h r so delta h r is delta h 1 that is the direct root minus the indirect root that is delta h 2 and so if we substitute the values minus 84 minus of minus 259 kilojoules per mole we get positive 175 kilojoules per mole so this is the value of delta h that is the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate let's go with the next part and the last part of this question one identify the main weaknesses of the experimental procedure and suggest one improvement to overcome this weakness the main weakness is not the type of the thermometer used. so we are not supposed to mention about the type of the thermometer used here okay so the biggest weakness of this experiment is that it's a neutralization reaction and we are carrying it out in a beaker and we are measuring the temperature change so here the most important weakness is that there is a heat loss to the surrounding heat loss to the surrounding because we are using a beaker in an open one and measuring the temperature change so the improvement only can be 
use a lid so that the heat loss is less so improvement is use a lid to the beaker or you can use any other container with the lid and in which we can insert the thermometer also so this is how question one ends we'll discuss the question two in the next video